Hello everyone. This is the second lecture on the second outcome that is your magnetism. Now in the previous lecture we have studied about the force on a current carrying conductor. Now the force on a current carrying conductor it is given by this equation here which is force is equal to magnetic flux density that is B multiplied by the current multiplied by the length of the conductor. Okay. And the direction of the force is given by Fleming's left hand rule. Now let us take this question based on this formula. So let's read the question. So the figure below depicts a straight current carrying conductor perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field. Now the first thing which we have to determine is the magnitude and the direction of force on the conductor. When the flux density, so this flux density it is given in the question that's your B is given to be 0 0.5 and the effective length of the conductor that is L is also given it's given to be 0 0.55 uh, meters and the current I is also given to be 4 amperes right so basically all the values they are given P, I and L. They are all given in the question. Now this is the solution of the question. So in this question uh, all the things your magnetic flux density is given, the length is given and the current is given. And we already know that the force on this current carrying conductor which is placed in a magnetic field is given by this formula which is B I L. So we simply have to multiply these values together and what we will get is 1.1 Newton. Okay. Now for the direction of uh, um, the force on this current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field is given by Fleming's left hand rule. So Fleming's left hand rule uh, the thumb uh, is it gives you the direction of force the first finger it gives you the direction of magnetic field and your second finger or your middle finger it gives the direction of current so in this case you 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 have a plus or a cross sign over here between within a circle so that means the current is flowing into the conductor Right? So the current is flowing into the conductor and the magnetic field is from north to south or from right hand side to the left hand side. So the direction of force will be upward. Right? So that's why the direction of force is upward. Now similarly, let's take another question or the second part of this question. So in this question, we have to determine again the magnitude and the direction of force on the conductor when the flux density. So again, flux density is given. It's given to be 1000 milli tesla. So flux density B is given and the effective length of the conductor. So again, length is given. It's given to be 45 centimeters. And the current I is 2 amperes. Right? So again, although this particular question, there are some values in uh, milli tesla. So we will have to convert them into tesla. And the centimeter has to be converted into meters. But essentially, all the values are given. And we simply have to convert the units and then multiply them together. So this is the solution. So the flux density 
B was given to be 1000 milli tesla. So I have converted it into tesla <coughs> by multiplying it with 10 to the power minus 3. It comes out to be 1 tesla. Okay. The length was given in centimeters which is 45 centimeters. So again I have to convert it into meters and the current is given in amperes. So 2 amperes. So after the unit conversion I multiply them together and I got 0 0.9 newtons. Okay. Now in this case uh, so that is the magnitude of the force. Okay, so the magnitude of force we have determined. Now, uh, what about the direction of the force? So in this case again, we'll use Fleming's left hand rule. So we'll take our left hand, stretch our thumb, first finger and the second finger perpendicular to each other, something like this. Okay, so thumb represents force. Um, your first finger represents magnetic field, your second finger or your middle finger, it represents the direction of current. So in this case, since you have a circle with a dot, right? So that means uh, the arrow is coming out of that cylinder, right? So if we consider the, uh, the conductor as a cylinder and consider the current as an arrow. So if the arrow is coming towards you, you will see a circle with a dot, with the tip of the arrow, right? So we get, uh, so basically the current is coming out of the conductor and the direction of the magnetic field is from uh, this time from left hand side to the right hand side, okay? So the force will be inward or upward we can say. No, it will be inwards. Yeah, it will be in that direction. Okay. Now, having discussed these numerical problems, let's come back to a few things which we have discussed in the previous class. So in the previous class, we have already uh, kind of uh, discussed the working principle of a DC motor. Now in the case of DC motor, we have a current carrying conductor which is placed in this magnetic field. So you have two magnets and in, in between you have a current carrying conductor. So what we have observed is that this current carrying conductor will experience some kind of a force on it. And as a result of this, uh, we developed a DC motor based on this principle. And what we observe is that if we have a square coil or a rotor, as we call it, this rotor, if it is carrying some current in this magnetic field, uh, it will start to rotate, like as you can see in this video. Now, using this analogy, uh, what would happen if we place the same coil within the same magnetic field, but instead of applying a current or a voltage source, instead of connecting this uh, rotor to a voltage source, we start rotating it manually. Right? Instead of applying the current, we are rotating this coil. Now over here, in the case of DC motor, uh, basically, it is converting the electrical energy into mechanical energy, right? The motion. So, the law of conservation of energy should also imply in the second case, right? So, in the second case, we are applying mechanical energy. Same case, right? The same condition is there, but we are now applying mechanical energy. So, if we mechanically or manually rotate this coil, we should get some electric current from this coil. So that is the principle of your AC generator. So as you can see in this video, if we have a crankshaft 
where we hold it and we rotate the coil within this magnetic field. What we observe is that as the coil rotates, you get some current right, out of this coil. So that is how we generate alternating current. Okay. Now, to further discuss a little bit more about this or to try and understand these concepts, uh, basically your, uh, your principle for uh, AC generator or electrical generator, it is based on electromagnetic induction. So what does electromagnetic induction, it says? It says that when the magnetic flux cutting the coil is made to vary or change, then an EMF is generated in the coil. Right? So we have a magnet and obviously this magnet will have some magnetic flux around it. Right? So this is your magnetic flux around your magnet. And if this magnetic flux is made to change in respect to this coil, that is something like this, if you are moving the magnet in and out of this coil, okay? So in that case, the magnetic flux will change. Magnetic flux cutting the coil, it will change change right so as a result of this a emf or a electromotive force will be generated in the coil right and obviously if you have an electromotive force then some current will start flowing in the coil okay now so basically here in this using this electromagnetic induction or the principle of uh, electromagnetic induction we are generating electromotive force right so again this is a force so it should have some direction and magnitude right force is a vector quantity so a vector quantity always have a direction and a magnitude right so let's try and find these values so, there are some laws of electromagnetic induction. So, the first law is your Faraday's law. Okay. Now, Faraday's law, it gives you the value or the magnitude of the, uh, of the electromotive force. Okay. So, let's read what does this law says. So, when the magnetic flux through a coil is made to vary and EMF is induced in the coil. We have just now discussed about this. And the magnitude of this induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux. That means how fast you are moving this coil, uh, moving this magnet. It depends upon uh, the amount of electromotive force or the magnitude of the electromotive force. It will depend how fast you are moving this magnet uh, in, uh, in and out of this coil. Now, one thing more which I would like to mention here is that um, either you move the magnet, right, something like in and out of this coil, or you move the coil right in respect to the magnet that means you have this coil and let's say you have a magnet so either you move the magnet close and away or in and out of this coil or you keep the magnet fixed and you move this coil right uh, closer and away like that so in either case there will be some emf generated in this coil so there should be some relative motion between the magnet and the coil. So basically, we should have some relative motion 
between magnet and coil okay then your emf will be generated okay and the magnitude of that emf it is proportional to the rate at which you are uh, moving the magnet or the speed at which you are moving the magnet closer and away or you can say the rate of change of flux okay now this emf it is given by this formula over here so basically your induced emf it depends upon flux density the length of the conductor or the length of the coil and the velocity at which you move the conductor or the magnet okay and theta is the angle which the solenoid makes uh, with the magnetic line of forces so you have your coil here okay and you have your magnet right so magnetic fields they are cutting this coil right so uh, so if we consider just the front face of the coil right it will be a circle something like a circle and let's say if the magnetic field they are making perpendicular they are falling perpendicular on the front face of the coil okay so this angle at which your magnetic field they are falling on the face so currently i am assuming they are falling at 90 degree off right so this angle theta uh, it shows the angle at which your magnetic field or flux they are cutting this coil or they are falling on that coil and in general in this uh, module we will we'll consider that to be 90 degree right so sin 90 is 1 okay this factor is almost is equal to 1 so basically the electromotive force or the induced emf will be b multiplied by l multiplied by v okay now so we have a formula to find the magnitude of this electromotive force or the induced emf now let's find the direction of the emf so for finding the direction we uh, discuss lenz law right so lenz law it says that the direction of this induced emf always opposes the very cause that produces it so lenz law it basically says that this induced emf is a bit selfish right it will oppose the very cause that produces it and what is the cause which is producing this emf it is um, the um, motion or the you know when you are moving the coil or the magnet Uh, the relative motion is is causing this emf or we can say the change of flux is the cause so this emf induced emf it will oppose the change of flux okay so it will try and oppose this change of flux which is causing the emf to be induced so basically what happens is you have your coil and you have your magnet over here and let's say uh, we are moving the magnet okay or there is some relative motion between the coil and the magnet right and these magnetic flux will change or uh, magnetic flux cutting the coil will change okay so i've represent Uh, represented it by d phi the change in uh, magnetic flux right and
and if there is a change in magnetic flux a emf will be generated okay now this emf will be generated now what happens is that you have the current which is induced because of this emf obviously there will be some current which will be induced in the coil right so this current as we know that uh, any current carrying conductor will have a magnetic field around it so because of this induced current some magnetic field will be generated around the coil i am calling that as induced magnetic field and you have an external magnetic field because of this magnet right so these two fields they will oppose each other right they will be in the opposite direction so one um, so the magnetic field of your magnet is going in clockwise direction whereas the induced current or the induced magnetic field will be in the uh, anti clockwise direction right so if you try and bring them together they will the magnetic fields they will try and repel them so basically that's how your uh, induced emf opposes the motion or the cause which is producing it okay now to find the direction obviously we know uh, the direction of the induced emf will be uh, will oppose the very cause that produces it that is it will oppose the change of flux okay but we need to be more accurate which direction right so similar to fleming's left hand rule we have fleming's right hand rule now in the case of fleming's left hand rule we are used to stretch our thumb first finger and the second finger perpendicular to each other okay like that the thumb used to represent force the first finger used to represent magnetic field and the second finger used to represent current right so if you find it difficult to remember in a family we have father mother and children so f m c force magnetic field and current okay for fleming's left hand rule now in the case of fleming's right hand rule you have the figure in front of you uh, so instead of force we have motion here right the thumb in the fleming's right hand rule it represents motion whereas the remaining finger they represents the same quantities right so motion is represented by thumb and apart from that your first finger still it represents field and your second finger it represents current in the case of fleming's right hand rule right so again uh, you have i have taken my right hand so the motion will be uh, the direction of thumb uh, the direction of field will be given by your first finger and the direction of current will be given by your second finger right so first finger and the second finger they are representing the same quantity or they are showing the direction of the same quantity first finger is magnetic field in both left hand and right hand rule and the second finger is also your current which is the same in left hand rule and the right hand rule the only difference is the thumb right in the case of left hand it was force in the case of right hand rule it is motion okay now in a question which rule should we use so fleming's right hand rule is generally used for 
generator where uh, you have you are generating current right and Fleming's left hand rule is used for motors where you are producing the uh, producing a force to rotate a coil right so if I say that generating current is the right thing to do so nowadays in the 21st century with the increase in demand of electricity I would say generating current is the right thing to do so for generating or for generator we use right hand uh, Fleming's right hand rule okay so for generator we use Fleming's right hand rule and the thumb is your represents your motion whereas your first finger uh, represents the magnetic field and the second finger represents direction of current now let's take a question based on uh, this so the question says the figure below depicts a straight current carrying conductor moving perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field calculate the EMF or the voltage induced in the conductor so this question clearly clearly it says we have to calculate the EMF which is induced in the conductor so that means we are talking about generator we will use Fleming's right hand rule okay induced in the conductor when it is moved with a velocity of 1 meters per second so we are given with the value of velocity v it is given to be 1 meters per second through a magnetic field of flux density so again b is given 0 0.5 tesla and a effective length so the length of the conductor is also given it is given to be 2 centimeters we will have to convert it into meters and we already know the formula so induced EMF the magnitude of the induced EMF it will be P multiplied by L multiplied by V all the values are given we just need to convert the unit okay and put them there now in the figure uh, what we see is we have to find the direction of the current the magnet the north pole of the magnet is on the right hand side and the south pole of the magnet is on the left hand side and apparently this conductor is moving in the downward direction so I have drawn a 3D tried to draw a 3D diagram for you so you have the magnet here and this cylinder or this conductor is uh, exp uh, is being moved in the downward direction okay now so let's first find the magnitude and then we will uh, find the direction of the induced EMF or the induced current so this is the solution of this question now velocity is given 1 meters per second uh, magnetic flux density is 0 0.5 tesla length is 2 centimeter so I have multiplied it by 10 to the power minus 2 to convert it into meters and then use all these value substitute it in the equation and if we do the calculation we will end up getting 10 millivolts okay now uh, the direction of this induced EMF or this induced current so we will use Fleming's right hand rule so thumb represent the direction of motion first finger it represents the direction of magnetic field the, uh, the second finger or the middle finger it represents direction of current which we have to find right 
so motion is in the downward direction the magnetic field is from right hand side to the left hand side so the motion or the direction of current will be inward right so if you have a cylinder and the current which is represented by arrow it is going into that cylinder from the front face you will observe a circle with the back side of the arrow that is a cross right so i have represented uh, that uh, direction of current by a circle with a cross that means the current is flowing into the conductor okay <clears throat> now the next topic is inductance or basically it is the continuation of our discussion so inductance is the property of a circuit which induces an emf in the circuit due to a change of flux produced by the current change or the change in current right so basically if you have a changing current or let's say a alternating current right flowing into a conductor it will produce a flux uh, since your current is alternating so your flux will also be alternating or changing with respect to time and if this current this alternating current is flowing in this type of a coil right so this alternating flux or this changing flux will be induced in this coil right so basically because of this alternating flux or this changing flux an emf will be generated okay so change in the current will cause change in current flowing in the coil will cause a changing flux and this changing flux will induce an emf right so that's the chain of things over here right the unit of inductance is henry which is represented by capital letter h slide now inductance is of two types you have self inductance which is represented by capital letter n and the self inductance uh, basically it is the emf induced in the same coil right so let's say this is your coil and you have connected it to an alternating current right so alternating current if you plot it it will look something like this so this is the magnitude the y axis represent the magnitude of current and x axis is your time so with respect to time the value of current is changing right so if you if this current is flowing in a conductor if this alternating current is flowing in this conductor so obviously any current if it flows in the conductor it induces a magnetic field around it and since this current is alternating the magnetic field will also be alternating or we can say it will change with respect to time yeah so what happens is basically you have this magnetic uh, this magnetic field which is changing with respect to time and if it links with a coil or a conductor 
what will happen is it will induce an EMF in this coil. Right? So let's see what is happening here. So this alternating is current is flowing in this in this uh, coil and as a result of that you get some magnetic field which is represented by blue color over here right now this changing magnetic field it will induce a current which is your green arrow okay and obviously we know that this induced current or this induced emf it opposes the cause which produces it so the cause which is producing it is the flow of alternating current right so again it is obviously because of change in magnetic flux or magnetic field but this change in magnetic field or this changing magnetic field is a result of this alternating current which is flowing in this in the in the coil so this induced current will oppose the primary current or the supply current right and it happens within the same coil okay so that's called your self inductance now the second case is your or the second type of inductance is your mutual inductance which is represented by capital m now obviously mutual it means between two coil something like mutual understanding it, it is between two people right so similarly mutual inductance will be between two coils right so mutual inductance is between two coils so mutual inductance is the emf which is induced by a change of flux due to current changing in the adjacent coil or the neighboring coil right so if we have two coils which are magnetically coupled right which are magnetically coupled that is they are wound around the same core right you have a square iron core and on one side you have a primary coil and on the second side on the other side just front of it you have the secondary coil and in the primary coil we have applied a alternating current over here we have applied an ac so obviously this current it will flow in the in the coil this changing current which will produce a magnetic field which will be changing with respect to time right a changing magnetic field right on the primary side and since they are magnetically coupled or they are wound around the same iron core what will happen that mag uh, this magnetic field it will be induced in the secondary coil in the secondary coil and as a result of which you will have some current flowing in this coil so that this current uh, in the secondary coil it will be also alternating alternating or changing with respect to time this secondary current it will be also alternating so mutual inductance it happens between two coils which are uh, 
adjacent to each other and they are magnetically coupled by an iron core or some kind of metal over there right so this magnetic field induced in the primary will get coupled or will get induced in the secondary coil and as a result even though you have a distance between them you will get some current flowing in the secondary coil so this is the principle of transformer right this is how you develop a step up or a step down transfer right so depending upon the number of coil uh, on the secondary side if you have more number of coil on the secondary side you can increase the value of current right up to a limit obviously but you can increase the value of current or the emf on the secondary side and if you have less number of turns or less number of coils in the secondary coil then you can step down the voltage you can reduce the value of uh, current or the induced emf in the secondary coil now this induced emf in the coil of l henry let's say some l henry is given by this equation here which is induced emf e is minus l di by dt so di by dt is your rate of change of current rate of change of current right and this negative sign here indicates that this induced emf will oppose the change in current which is producing it right lens law so that is you have a negative sign here to indicate that this induced emf will oppose the change in current which is producing this emf now this di by dt it can be represented as you know or this equation entirely it can be modified and written as minus l i2 minus i1 so i2 is the final current i2 is the final current and i1 is the initial current right similarly t2 is the time the uh, final time and t1 is the initial time right so let's take a question based on that formula so we have to calculate the emf induced in a circuit of in a circuit of 25 milli henry right inductance so inductance is given So this inductance L is given to be 25 milli henry. If the current increases at a rate of 10 amperes per second, so rate of increase or rate of change of current that is Ti by dt is given to be 10 amperes per second. Right? So we can use this formula here. this is the solution of the question so inductance is given in milli henry so i'll have to convert it into uh, henry by multiplying it with 10 to the power 
3 minus 3. Uh, rate of change that is uh, di by dt is given 10 amperes per second. So if we multiply them together that is use this equation put the values in them and multiply uh, the given values you would end up getting minus don't forget the negative sign right so you will have minus 0 0.25 volt or we can say it will be 0 0.25 volts in the anti-clockwise direction right so the direction of the emf will be in the anti-clockwise direction and its magnitude will be 0 0.25 Now let's take the, six, uh, the next question. So in this question, uh, we have to calculate the EMF induced in a circuit of 50 milli Henry. If the current is decreased from 30 milli amperes to 15 milli amperes in 60 seconds, 60 milliseconds. So in this question, uh, we have to find induced EMF and the inductance L is given to be 50 milli Henry and the current is decreasing from 30 milli amperes. So the initial current I1 was 30 milli amperes and it is de decreasing to a value of 15 milli amperes. So that will be my I2. And the time it takes for this uh, decrease in current, it is 60 milliseconds. So that means T2 minus T1, it will be 60 milliseconds. So we can use this formula here. Now, this is the solution for the question. So we have written down all the values which are given. So done the unit conversion. So inductance L, it was given to be in milli uh, Henry. So we have converted it into Henry by multiplying it with 10 to the power minus 3. Also these currents, the initial current and the final current, we have also converted them into amperes. Time was given in millisecond. So again, you'll have to do the conversion right, uh, into seconds. And then using this equation, which is EMF or induced EMF is minus L di by dt or I2 minus I1 divided by T2 minus T1. So the final current I2 it is 15 milliamperes right and the initial current I1 is 30 milliamperes right. So I have written it like 15 minus 30 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. Right. So I have taken 10 to the power minus 3 common and this value, this subtraction, it will come out to be minus 15. Right. So sign or uh, this is quite important. And one thing before I miss that, I have missed a negative sign here. Right. Minus L. Right. Okay. So divided by T2 minus T1 is also given. It is 60 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3. And if we do the calculation, this negative sign and this negative sign here, they will make it positive. So we'll get plus 0 0.0125 volts. Okay. So that will be the induced EMF. Similarly, let's take one last question. Uh, two coils are wound around a common magnetic core which have a mutual inductance of 30 milli Henry. So mutual inductance is given. So let's say, let's call that, you know, mutual inductance, it is generally M represented by capital M. So Either you can write it as capital M. So in that case, in the formula, this capital L representing your self-inductance will be replaced by capital M. 
okay so mutual inductance m is given to be 30 milli henry if the current in one coil is increasing so this time the current is increasing from 10 milli amperes so initial current i1 is 10 milli amperes to 20 milli amperes so the final current is 20 that is i2 is 20 milli amperes in 0 0.2 second so t2 minus t1 is given to be 2 seconds so we have to calculate the emf induced in the other coil so this is a question about mutual inductance so basically you would have two coils like this and in the primary coil you have connected a changing current or an alternating current right its value was initially i1 was 10 milliamperes and it is changing to a value i2 which is 20 milliamperes and the time it takes for this change is 20 milli uh, sorry 0 0.2 seconds 0 0.2 seconds right so we have to find the um, emf induced in the secondary coil or in the other coil okay so these two coils they are magnetically coupled like that right so obviously we can use this formula over here emf e or induced emf is minus m so in the case of mutual inductance this formula it will be modified as minus m l i2 minus i1 divided by t2 minus t1 so this is the uh, solution of the question so i've written down and converted the units over here so I, I'm using L only to represent mutual inductance, um, not modifying the formula, right? So mutual inductance is given, I1 and I2 are given and the difference in time is given. So we just have to substitute them properly in the question, uh, in the equation. So uh, the mutual inductance is 30 milli henry so obviously you'll have to convert it into henry so minus 30 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 multiplied by i2 is 20 milli, milli amperes so we have to convert it again into amperes and i1 is 10 so 20 minus 10 so this time this subtraction it will give me a positive value plus 10 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 so again i have taken 10 to the power minus 3 common from i2 and i1 divided by the difference in time is 0 0.2 second that is t2 minus t1 is 0 0.2 seconds so if we do the calculation this time we will get a negative value and that will be minus 1.5 millivolts okay so this was all about uh, the magnetism that is your second outcome so we have completed all the topics in this in this outcome of magnetism so thank you very much